So if you're listening and you, you're like, I'm the best pool guy in my area and I don't have all the work because you know XYZ has it. If you're legit the best at what you do and you feel like you aren't getting the accounts that you should be getting or the pricing that you should be getting, more than likely it's the branding. This is episode 139 with Paul Sebastian of Brandsmith and Kane Zamorano of Premier Pool Care. Enjoy. Welcome to your go-to podcast for the pool and spa industry. My name is Tyler Rasmussen. And my name is Greg Diafania. And this is the Pool Chasers Podcast. All right. Well, thank you guys both for joining us today. We appreciate you coming down to the studio. Yeah. Thank you for having us. Thank you for having us. So, Ken, we had you on the podcast before, episode 62, where we heard your story. And now, Paul, we got you with us. We'd like to get to know you a little bit better. So can you share with us a little bit about your business, Brandsmith Co., and what you guys do exactly? Yeah. So we are, I would consider us a a boutique-style branding company that specializes in vehicle wraps. So we cater more in the design and branding uh, portion of business. Uh, but we also do in-house vehicle wraps. Nice. And how'd you get started? You know, it's a funny story. I basically graduated college uh, in design, and then there was a portfolio showing. Local wrap company saw my portfolio, asked me to come down, hired me on the spot. I worked there for quite a while, and then I started Brandsmith. Mm. So it was, you know, pretty, I would say pretty typical of what most people kind of go through the progress. You know, you don't typically come out of school and just start a company. I definitely had a lot of learning experiences and learned what not to do at the company I was with. And so when I started Brandsmith, I really wanted to create something that was unique in the space of vehicle wraps, but offered a broader spectrum of services. So I don't really like to categorize us as a wrap company, even though we do a ton of wraps. We're really there to hold our clients' hands and help them with the branding and marketing side of things, because that's something that's a lot more tangible and creates longer relationships for us, we've found. Right. And I think to set the stage a little bit, you are a young guy, you know, 35 years old, you've got this successful business where it's pretty much an agency that's doing everything marketing in-house, including vehicle wraps. But you truly put in the work. And I think that that is something that a lot of people don't see all the time, especially on social media sure. and you know different things like that. So, I mean, you were probably an artist most of your life, constantly drawing. And we talked a little bit before we started the podcast, but you were an artist, constantly drawing, went to college right after high school, like immediately, like yep. super impressive to just go from one thing to another because this was your passion. I mean, yeah. is that? Yeah. So, yeah, basically what happened is I was good at art, but Art wasn't really a career path that, you know, most people can make a good living on. It wasn't my number one choice. And I went to vocational high school, studied CAD, actually, because I was good at computers and I was good at drawing. So CAD seemed to be like a natural fit for at least where I'm from, a small town. You're not going to be, you're not going to have an agency or anything in that town. So from Massachusetts? Yeah, Yeah. I'm from Massachusetts originally, uh, Western Mass. So before people say, he doesn't sound like he's from Boston. (laughs) Western Mass is different. <laughs> not everybody has to sound like uh, Mark Wahlberg. Yeah, yeah, no, not from Boston. Western Mass, closer to New York. Are you a Patriots fan? Yes. But I'm, I'm happy for the Bucks. I mean, come on. Dude, it's so crazy, right? Tom Brady's going to the Super Bowl. Uh, yeah. just, this shit's nuts. Yeah, and you can't hate the Bucks. Nobody hates the Bucks. They're not yeah. even relevant. Yeah, right? nobody even I knows mean, about them. <laughs> when the Bucks won the game, though, do you think Belichick, like a TV went through the window? Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, said, oh, this guy again. Yeah. <laughs> I got to do it. Cam Newton. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so anyways, yeah. So my mom actually encouraged me to go to school for art. And so I just decided we looked at a few different schools. Arizona seemed like a place to go. And I literally just packed up my Civic and just drove out. That's it. No way. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> You didn't know anybody out here or anything? No, no. Really? Yeah. I mean, so that's kind of, <laughs> so if you can take anything from that story, that's literally how I've been able to like create anything is you just go, you just do it. That's yeah. really interesting. What do you think? And we'll jump into everything rap, not rapping, but vehicle raps. <laughs> I keep thinking of rapping every time I say rap, but what is the difference between a city like Boston? I mean, for like what you do, because sure. I feel like. There's a lot more 
history and culture, mm-hmm. everything from the architecture to even some of the old typography and, yeah. you know, some of the old logos and different things like that yeah. in terms of yeah, New for Eng- what you do. Yeah, New England is, they're way behind as far as the rap industry, 100%. Like you see stuff there now looks like what we were creating like 10 years ago. And it kind of goes like that in general with most industries I find we're way more cutting edge on the Western coast i find uh we've done wraps across the whole country so we've like back in when i started my company we traveled a lot i've been to almost all states doing our work so it's interesting to see you know phoenix is definitely on the up and up it's a very prime market for vehicle wraps it's almost like if you don't have a wrap here in phoenix or any of these kind of las vegas uh, these hot these hot spots like you're way behind whereas in massachusetts if you get a rap now like you're still way ahead right and i think you can get as creative as you want and you know you look at uh brand smith paul's work you'll see that you can get as crazy as you want with this stuff and you guys can really make it happen but when we think about vehicle wraps it could be done in a very minimal way So let's think about this for a second. You might not be thinking about it, but what vehicles out there are wrapped in a sense like UPS? Totally. uh, American Airlines, they every airplane you see taken off coming Mm -hmm. in, they've got their brand, their logo on it. Mm -hmm. Uh, Amazon, you'll see some Google cars out there. Domino's, you won't see one of their cars out there that's not branded. So even the police department. Sure. Yeah. Fleets of police department, black and white, all their stuff all over it. So this is like a part of anybody's brand and company for these bigger companies anyway. Yeah. And it, it's just it's it wasn't a thing for small businesses, you know, 10, 15 years ago. It wasn't wraps have uh, become way more mainstream. There's a lot more rap companies out there now. So guaranteed whoever's listening to this there's a there's probably two or three in their 30 40 mile distance so it's very accessible now there's not it's not this mystery that it used to be so that's good because it's accessible which means it should be relatively affordable right and we're going to get all into that because i think for what you get out of it even i mean most of them don't cost you know ten thousand dollars unless you want to do it but even if you were making an investment around 10 to 20, what you get from it. I mean, if you really look into what we're about to talk about and do all the research you want, you will see that, man, it it's paid back in full. Like, yeah, the really number, quick. Yeah, I mean, there is there is absolutely no way that anybody should not have at least some form of advertising on their vehicle that they're performing work with. Like, there's just no excuse. It's and if it's, you know, I hear it sometimes. Well, I, you know, I speed, you know, I do this, I do that. I don't want to be, you know, known, you know, for doing X, Y, Z. Like I get that, but you're, you know, you're not doing yourself a service of getting qualified leads and, you know, we can get into the benefits of vehicle wrap. But if you're listening to the podcast and if you don't have a vehicle wrap, you should get one. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's. I think it helps keep you accountable too, right? You know that your vehicle's wrapped. I mean, Kane, I feel like from day one when you said you're going to be in the pool service business, you went and got your vehicle. You got some decals on it, you know, because we're we're kind of alike like that. It's like thought of a name. First thing I need to do is get some shirts made, some stickers made, and (laughs) it is it is on. It's official. But you having so many vehicles that have had your company name on it, have you? Has that made you aware of the way that you drive and just oh, acting responsible? 100%. Yeah. yeah. I feel like I've gotten a lot better at driving. Not that I was a bad driver, but, you know, I definitely probably drove a little bit faster in the beginning. And I've had, I think, five years I've had my trucks wrapped and I've gotten two calls. So... I've gotten, I feel like that means I'm <laughs> two pretty, negative calls. Yeah, two negative calls. Oh, I was like, I'm like, yeah, let's, let's, let's um, correct that. No, no, yeah, two negative I'm like, calls. No, I'm like, not for the <laughs> right? no. And one of them was, uh, I forgot to put a lid on my trash bucket. And he's, the guy's like, uh, yeah. oh, your guy's littering all over the road. Uh, <laughs> the leaves. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, the leaves. That's the secret. You know, people are like, oh, I don't want to get calls. And you just, 
you say, hey, you're going to get calls, but you're like, I'll let my guy know. Even yeah, if it's exactly. you. Oh, exactly. Like, yeah. I love that. Every yeah. time I'm like, I'll, let, oh, I'll, I'll talk to him. I'm like, no, and it's me. And they're right behind me. <laughs> I had somebody call me about the driving. They said, you got one of your guys. Oh, yeah. He's on the side of me. Yeah. And I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, oh, this is awkward. Uh, for man. sure. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> Issue with being yeah. a small business owner. I will say though, on this new new one, I I didn't put anything contact wise, <laughs> and I didn't do a back window, but got like a picture of you and everything. Yeah. Right? <laughs> well, I mean, he's he's becoming the Nike. So you know, when you're the you Nike, go. you don't have to have, you don't have to have all that. And, you know, a lot of people forget that is once you're once you're known in your area you don't need to shout it you, oh, you just be i feel yeah. like it i'm at a point where it's like if you know you know like yeah <laughs> well and i think that goes with your boutique style of what you were trying to attract yeah. and you're not trying to get everybody to call you oh 100 so you know you it's just different strategy different right? business strategy yeah, yeah. 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 If, if your strategy is to own an entire development of for house or for pool cleaning you know then you can't be cane Right. You know. you're, you're, you're gonna yeah. need. You're gonna need to have that weekly pool service cleaning, nice and big, so people can call and right. understand that you know for X Y Z, you're gonna be able to get that maintenance. Yeah. So it just depends on your, you know, your hopes and dreams for your company and what you ach- want to achieve will really dictate how you design and present your wrap. So it's an important part of that. You know, a lot of the conversations we have with our you know, new clients, when we get them, it's like, you know, who are you and what do you want to be? And where are you now? Where do you want to be? And these kinds of questions help to kind of sort out that process and, and cater down the design to what's going to help them achieve that. Right. So let's talk about your vehicle cane because it's badass. Yeah. Like <laughs> it might be the best we've yeah. done. <laughs> I mean, once we saw that we knew we had to talk about it for sure. And that's kind of how this whole podcast happened. But yeah, you know, I know you've gone through a couple different types. You know, you did have a strategy of growing a lot in the beginning, so yeah. you had more. But now with this specific design, can you talk about maybe how it's made you look more professional and giving you a leg up over the competition, things like that. Yeah. So the market I'm in now most of the houses we're going to are two, five, ten. I have a customer that just listed their house for $27 million. So, like, they're really over the top and they're like extravagant things. So, I kind of was playing into that part and wanted my truck to kind of look the part because I'm in the neighborhood, you know, all the time. And I kind of want to be like a part of the neighborhood. And everyone's like, oh, that's Premier. And that's who I call when I need something. So, that was when I hit up Paul for this one. I was like, I don't want, everyone kind of knows me by Premiere now. So I don't want the numbers and stuff. And if they get my number, it's from someone. It's a customer. It's tell you yeah, want. Yeah. yeah, it's for a customer that I want. So I just told Paul to go kind of crazy with it. And I think I just showed him one rap that he had done that I liked and gave him the free reign on that one. Yeah. What well, do you feel like when you pull up to a house now with that, like it just changed the dynamic of your conversations? Yeah. I think especially in the neighborhoods we're working in, they're, expecting like the best and when they see the truck they're like oh a lot of people think it's a negative like oh people are think you're gonna get rich off one job but in that community it's more like this guy knows what he's doing and he does it well like that's why he has this so i'm gonna i'm more incentivized to hire him yeah i mean it kind of brings their guard down a little yeah. Bit. yeah but i think that's critical you're getting access maybe to these gated exclusive communities that aren't so easy to get into yeah and say you're visiting that house depending on what you're doing if you're doing pool service you're there once a week maybe the truck's in in front of the house for 30 minutes yeah for however many years or even renovation could be a year less whatever it may be you've now got that brand recognition within that neighborhood i mean like Let's face it, if you're doing Facebook ads or Google ads or anything like that, it's not, it would be extremely difficult to pinpoint right. that demographic in that neighborhood oh, because impossible. you're, if you're doing pool service, the name of the game is trying to get quality pools and build a very tight route. So oh. if you're taking care of this house right here, you're hoping that the next door neighbors um, are going to see your vehicle, take a picture of it, do some research, and then contact you. So, 
I think that that is one of the the key deals is you have a quality wrap on a nice vehicle and it's in the neighborhood and your message, you've got a very direct message because if you're kind of trying to do something specific, because I think you have a unique situation. You have built a brand where you are able to, but I think for most people, you are going to need to be very specific. Oh, 100%. Well, yeah, but Kane didn't start that way either. Yeah, yeah exactly. So you can't just shortcut to that to exactly. that level like anybody you know people people probably see kane's instagram and his vehicles and you know people that are coming up are like i want to do that i'm gonna jump right into that well you haven't earned it yet so you know you yeah. do have to earn it you do have to do the work and you do have to build the build the relationships before you can get that so a lot of people you know we get new customers all the time that you know see kane's wrap on our portfolio or some other wraps what we've done that's kind of similar in his level and I'm just like, are you doing that kind of work now? Well, we're doing, you know, like landscape's a good representation. Like, you know, you could be doing a $250,000 renovation on a backyard, or you could be doing a $20,000 renovation in a backyard. Or like just those, mowing grass. Or those, yeah, mean, those demographics, so many different levels. Yeah, yeah, those demographics are completely different. Right. The expectations are completely different. Right. And the neighborhoods are completely different. So you might have to start off doing the hard work and, the, on those twenty thousand uh, dollar landscape jobs, where you're, you know, you're moving a lot of rock and you're doing the hard work before you get to build the quarter million dollar pool. Yeah, that's, that's why right. this wrap was, I feel like, so crucial because the market I'm targeting is they're never gonna Google pool service in Scottsdale. It's kind of you ask your neighbor or you ask your friend in the in the, in the area and they tell you like, then they're probably not even gonna go on Instagram because this is their fourth fifth house. They, they're living in Italy for the summer. So that that's why I felt like the, the wrap on this truck was so crucial because pretty much if I'm in the neighborhood, they're going to hire me. Well, in those neighborhoods, it's all about trust. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If this house right here and most of the times in those exclusive neighborhoods, they know each other because they're walking around, different things like that. And they know that if Greg over here in his $25 million house yeah. that, that I'm trying to sell right now. There you now. go. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, if I trust Kane and Premier Pool Care to take care of my pool, yeah. I've seen that truck there all the time. Um, I'm going to feel okay with them taking care of my pool yeah. too. So 100%. I think it's all about trust. That's why um, next door is so huge. And yep. we value the recommendations that people give within next door because it's like, well, you use them, you're kind of in the same area, like seem must be pretty legit. And I think that's the other cool thing about a wrap. Not only is it really cool looking, but I feel like if you're going above and beyond with a truck like yours, Kane, yeah, you're less likely to skip town or do any of the shady things that are within any industry. Yeah. I feel like I know this guy is going to be here because he has to like pay well, for that cares. wrap. Yeah. yeah. Plus he cares. He's you can business. tell he cares. Yeah, yeah. exactly. That's a big say, thing for sure. I would say in the last year too, when people call me, I'm not calling them. I'm giving them a bid, but they're calling me. I got the job. Like before I even get there, it's I, it's not like a question anymore. Like if they're calling me, it's to hire me. It's not to get a price. And it's I, an awesome I think position that, to be in. Yeah. <laughs> I feel and like I, we're on a reality show right now. <laughs> <was> like. Uh, <laughs> But you can get there. That's the thing. It's like that's that's achievable if you do the right if you go through the right process and you get the right branding. I mean, Kane's branding from the beginning was legit. So that's something everybody that's listening, you need to understand is you're not going to do that if you have, you know, an umbrella logo and it's got like people laying by it and it says pool service. (laughs) <laughs> it's right. just like you have to really you have to try to achieve this apple-esque or nike-esque or whatever brand that you prefer if you look like that it's amazing what amount of trust you'll get instantly yeah and it's great you mentioned on your website like at the very beginning that in the beginning i'm assuming you've gotten a lot of pool vehicles that you've done before mm-hmm. but it was just kind of this water texture with yeah. company logo on the door. But it was the first one you mentioned. I was like, that's that's pretty cool. Like, yeah. why <laughs> was it because you were seeing like every time you were doing a, a pool vehicle or just because you saw a ton of uh, pool service yeah, trucks so w- on the road? When I got into industry, 
I didn't know anything about vehicle wraps. I was a designer. So like vehicle wraps were, were pretty new at the time. I got hired at this, this wrap shop and they were doing wraps, but the wraps were like super lame. You know, <laughs> it was a pool company. Uh, I can't remember the name, but it was local. And, you know, it basically just had this, you know, stock photo water texture completely covered the entire car. And then it has like his white logo on it. Hmm. And I remember talking to my boss at the time and said like, so this is just digital. Like we can create anything. And they're like, yeah, it's just, you know, just digital. You just, it's just like anything else. You just, I was like, then why are we doing this? So yeah. that was, but that was everything back then. There weren't real designers in that space. This was, this was a sign company that, now was buying this vehicle wrap material and doing vehicle wraps. So traditionally speaking, the vehicle wraps exist in the sign industry. And if anybody's ever worked with a sign company, it's not a design company. So you, you go there and get some for sale signs on Coreplast printed and you mm -hmm. get a heat pressed shirt and they send you on your way. <laughs> yeah. So like, that's not, what vehicle wraps are now vehicle wraps now are like there's some great designers out there creating some really cool pieces of art that represent your brand and if that's not in your area there's other companies that will do that so if you're shopping for a wrap and you only have abc signs and you have sign sign today and sign tomorrow and these kinds of companies that say vehicle wraps you know i would do your do your homework and and try to you know at the end of the day the most they might try to sell you on oh we use 3m and we all we use the best materials and etc like that's important but i would venture to argue that the design is the most important it doesn't matter if they're 3m certified they have great materials if your design looks horrible you have a horrible design for three years and that's going to represent you for three years yeah. It's like, I know it doesn't look great, but it's going to last. <laughs> it's going to last a really long yeah, time. I mean, those are all important pieces to it, right? You want, you want that to last. It's an investment, but you know, the most important part of it is going to be the design, the branding right. for sure. And I don't think anybody could argue that. No, that's a great point for sure. Um, can you talk about maybe how you guys work together on that and your experience, Paul, with kind of yeah. him giving you the creative flow with it? For sure. Yeah. I, so Kane and I have been working what a couple years? Yeah, probably three, three four, years, four years. years something like that. Time flies. So he contacted me on Instagram, I believe. Yeah. And with our age demographic, that's a great way to gain business. Uh, we're relatively active. I think it's important if you're in business to be relatively active on Instagram. And so he contacted us, and he had a rap from a different company, and he won. He liked what we were doing. And so we created a new wrap. This is not the current wrap. So, so one for the box, the big. Yeah, box so truck. for the utility truck. Yeah, so utility truck. it came out cool. Uh, at the time, it was very fresh for the pool industry. Right. Uh, but this time he contacted me. He's like, I got this brand new F-250. I want to do something special on it. And I was like, perfect. I, I always have these ideas kind of on reserve that I have like hold on to when I have a great idea and I wait for the right, right project and the right client to pitch it. And so Kane's like, you know, I just want this. I just want the P on it. No contact info. And I was like, no contact info. Okay. And, uh, he didn't even want premier pools. He just wanted this cool icon and I kind of talked him into doing premier pools, but it's subtle. You know, it, if, if you, if you go and look at the wrap, you'll see, but I told him, I was like, I want to do this crazy, like tone on tone metallic print. And then I want to do this gloss water texture on top. That's kind of like this. We did these effects too. And it's really cool. It's, it's basically, we're like wrapping the truck kind of twice, um, the way we do it, which obviously adds cost, but it allows Is it because it's on layers. Yeah. So basically we wrapped the entire truck, one layer, and then we'd wrap like three quarters of it with a different layer. Okay. And so it's not, you barely ever see this. Uh, one, because it's cost prohibited for some people. And secondly, because it is very time consuming and a lot of, a lot of companies aren't necessarily going to do that. So I wouldn't say like, if I were to choose from a business standpoint as a rap company, that it's, it's relatively difficult and it's relatively 
like I would rather do single layer wraps, obviously, but you can't achieve this look. So it's just one of those situations where it's, I know that if we pull it off and we do it, it's going to be, it's going to lead me to this podcast. Well worth it. Yeah. yeah so, exactly. So, right. So it's like, and plus hey, like you, you earned it. Yeah, you earned that yeah, seat, yeah. man. Yeah. So For plus sure. like, I really like Kane and we've, re- we've always just really clicked on, on a design level. So it's just nice to be able to just do something really special for the people that you have good relationships with. And so we're always trying to do something, something new and something fresh for those kinds of customers. And obviously if they ask for it and they can afford it and they don't ask pricing, then we just deliver it. That's really cool that I like that you take that initiative and you know your job, not only as wrapping the vehicle, but as the creative and the director of what design is going to go on the vehicle. Because a lot of people kind of have some idea of what they want, but they're not maybe so creative or they don't really know what they want. And you want to rise to that challenge, right? Right. Whereas you're talking about some of the maybe like franchise companies or Mm -hmm. something that aren't really in that space. They just want to make some kind of clip art, you know, the same old, same old, where you're kind of like, I want the challenge. I... I want to figure this out and make it be better than the thing I did yesterday. Yeah. Uh, I think that's really cool. Yeah. And it's important to make sure that you're doing all your clients that I don't want to create something like I'll get another, I've gotten other pool companies that I like Kane's truck. I'm like, well, I'm not producing that for you. Like, you Mm -hmm. know, so we have to, I respect all my clients in a way that I won't do anything twice. Somebody would want the same exact. You'd be surprised. Yeah. Yeah. I I had a guy messaged me on Facebook right after I got the truck and he's like do you mind if I copy the water texture you put on your truck for mine because I'm about to get wrapped yeah interesting yeah and, and a lot of people wow. be like you know from out of state and they're like oh it'll, it won't matter and it's like well it matters to us you know like that's that's our that's our artwork it's our creative and we're not giving that to anybody else yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I've you actually know? heard that a couple of times from Paul and then my my buddy Alec, who helps me with some of the web stuff, and they both have told me that people hit him up and they're like, uh, I want you to do what you did for Kane. Like, I want to look like that. I'm like, that, it's so weird to me because I've always wanted to be like original. And I feel like it's, it's just crazy to me. It's a, it's but you'd a good have to buy your but... truck too because that, I feel like that artwork would look good on maybe any vehicle, but it's suited for that truck specifically. Oh, yeah. Like, you right. made that, I'm sure, specifically right. for that truck. Everything about it is gonna like it's like, yeah, well, what are you gonna put it on? It's like, well, I got this eighty six Toyota pickup. Yeah, I'm not gonna like, nah, I don't I don't know, man. It's like twice the size of that. So Yeah. Yeah, totally. So, you know, it's it's important to try to pave your own path, I think. I just that's just one of the things that bugs me with a lot of people they'll come to us. If I, I'll tell you if, if you're in the rap industry or you're looking to get a rap and you feel like you have to steer your designer, that's a bad designer. Mm. You know, like your designer should, you should be able to tell them who you are, what you do and what you want to achieve. And they should be able to do the, the research and find who your, who your competition is in your area and make sure that they can create something that's unique to you that also separates you from them. Right. Like these are all huge just basic principles for design. If you're listening and you're you're working with a rap company and you you feel like you have to steer them to create something, they're not a very good designer then. So hmm. it's just really important that you find somebody that you can partner with that understands design first and foremost and understands branding especially because it's funny because we start with a lot of companies that are, you know, startups and we'll create a wrap for them. And then they literally create all their other marketing and digital assets, websites and, you know, brochures and business cards and things to match their wrap because they love it so much. And everything else up until that point was not good. But we create a wrap that's like makes everything else look bad. So now they update it to match the wrap. So that's your hope because that is going to be your biggest representation of your company yeah i agree and we talked a little bit about that on a recent call is when you have brand guidelines or a brand guide that that is a piece of the puzzle it's a big piece Mm -hmm. but you're laying out what fonts you're using on your website what you're using in different types of maybe digital advertising or print different things like that but that is a key component within that 
So totally. that's something that you guys offer that as well, right? Yeah, that's, again, that's kind of what I designed our company to be first and foremost as a design company because that's really where it starts. If if you're going to a rap company or like a company like ours and you bring a logo that looks like it's from 2000, you might have some challenge to make that look nice on a wrap unless it was done really well. But in a lot of cases, when you're starting a company, you know, your brother's brother's friend who is a graphic designer and can put something together to you for a hundred bucks or never works out, but you know, <laughs> it gets you, it gets you started, but we get a lot of those customers and then we just say, Hey, like we can work with this or we go down this other path of rebranding because it might be way more cost effective to do that now than later. But yeah, so we, we start with a lot of startups too, where we'll create the logo, we'll create their apparel line, we'll create their business cards and leave behinds. We'll, we can create their website. And then we also create the truck that fits the whole, there's a package that really needs to be any, you know, startup company needs all these pieces. Right. And I think that really makes things so much easier because say a magazine wants to publish something you've done or, you know, you're sending out emails, somebody wants a brochure, somebody wants a media kit, you've got to make a new blog post. There's all these different things that you want to do. Putting creative together for social media posts, these all require assets. Sure. And it's really difficult when you're just wanting to put something together and you're not thinking about how you need to be using this font when you're quoting a review made right. or you're going to use this font when when you're doing your h2 header and then you're just doing kind of normal size type totally. that you have to use this font what a, a really in-depth guy does that you guys put together is putting together all those parameters even yep. down to the size that it's going to be yeah yeah and totally and it's funny because, you know, we'll create these brand guidelines for some of our larger customers. And then and then I'll see them make a social post. And I'm like, you're not following brand guideline at all. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll bust their chops a little bit and they'll laugh and they'll say, hey, can you fix this? You know, and um, but it's it is really important. That shows you care because they already paid. Yeah. Yeah. No. You know, that's a that's one of the thing is we're friendly with most of our customers like we're on a first name basis they have my cell phone they text me you know they invite me to their barbecues and i've built great relationships with most of my customers we've traveled together that's kind of relationship i try to create with my customers it's obviously not for everybody i don't create that for every customer but if we jive and we work together and you like the way that i work and i like the way that you run your business and allow us to do our job generally those relationships are great Right. Going on, like getting in the friend zone, does that help with those conversations? Like, <laughs> hey, man, I know we're having fun, but what the frick were you thinking yeah, no, on that I, Instagram post? I told you to use Helvetica and you're using some yeah. other crazy Fine. cursive font that nobody can even. Uh, yeah, yeah, totally. I mean, I, obviously, I'm not doing that for everybody, but, you know, any of my larger clients that I'm working on, like we work weekly with some clients like weekly sometimes daily you know i've have several clients that we've been working almost weekly for five years and, you know they're obviously larger clients and they have a larger budget for their marketing pieces but yeah we have relationships with we do those as well so we do startups and we do you know big companies so the formula is the same right very good Pentair is adding technology to help ease the experience of owning a pool. Take control of your pools with their all-new automation control panel, IntelliSync, and the Pentair Home app. With the IntelliSync, you will get affordable automation, 24-7 pump control by monitoring via the Pentair Home app, easy installation, which will actually allow you to plug directly into a 120-volt outlet, freeze protection, which helps safeguard the pump in cold weather conditions, and you will receive maintenance alerts to stay ahead of any issues. This can all be done through the Pentair Home app, which allows the ability to command all of a home's water systems at any time. It gives your customers peace of mind by giving them instant status information and monitoring from home or away 24-7. It notifies them when equipment needs attention, and it has the ability to connect them with a trusted professional like you. Stay smart, connected, and protected with Pentair. 
Learn more about the IntelliSync and the Pentair home app at pentair.com or click the link below. You know, we talked about Kane's vehicle, the newest one, but let's kind of go back to the vehicle wraps. And if somebody does not have one at all or is starting yeah. that process, what does the process look like between you and them? And, you know, how does that typically start? Yeah. So, so what it usually looks like for us is we'll get, get a call or an email or a DM on Instagram and they'll say, Hey, you know, I like what you do. I, I, I saw this, saw that I have a pool company. I have this truck. What are the steps? So what the steps are generally is first we find out like, is the logo usable? Do they have a logo? Are they open to adjusting the logo? You know, it really starts there. If their logo's great, then it's simple. If the logo's not great, then we have the discussion of finding out if we want to use that logo or how far we can change it. You know, if you already have 300 customers and they know you for this, um, then it makes some creative challenges on how we might be able to keep the integrity of the logo, but bring it to the next level. Yeah. Uh, we do that a lot. So that's something to consider when you're contacting a rap company is, are you content with your logo? And do you want to maybe take it to the next level? Because that's going to really be first step. Is one, you have to understand that this rap is going to represent you for three three-ish years, depending on your zone where you live, sun exposure, et cetera, et cetera. Vehicle reps generally last about three years, uh, maybe five years in like Seattle. Sure. Right. But let's just assume you have a logo, it's great. So the, what the process is gonna look like is we're going to take your truck or vehicle and we're going to get that templated. Then we're going to ask you these basic questions of what do you do, what makes you special, what makes you different from your competition, are you content with the current work? Or are you trying to get different work? These are kind of just basic business questions that you should be thinking about. And hopefully your designer will ask you because these are really important to creating a piece that represents you again for three years. You know, business has changed very quick. So if, if in one year you think you're going to get your ROC to start building pools versus servicing them, that's something to think about as you're designing your wrap. Um, because they're completely different. So these are the things you want to make sure that you want to have a clear understanding of for yourself. And then a, a proper designer will take that information and create something that's going to be representation of what you want to do and who you want to be. But for us, you know, we'll take a deposit, a design deposit, and then uh, we'll get we'll get working. General timeline, if you know, we collect a deposit uh, today is usually, a, you know, it could be three, could be five, could be seven business days. It really just going to depend on how, you know, we're never like my company will never send something out until we actually like it. So that's one thing that we're not, you know, you hope to work with a company that's not just throwing out something and hoping something sticks we're vetting our own designs to make sure that, you know, we feel it represents our company and represents their company. Those are some things that to consider. I just know that those scenarios are pretty prevalent out there. And like the sign wrap company world is, you know, they have junior designers that just want to like create something and then throw it out there and see if it sticks. And if it doesn't back to the drawing board, we really try to make sure that it's catered specifically and we're really happy with the aesthetics and it, and we're happy with the clarity of the messaging and the branding. So that's kind of the process. So once we get the design pitched uh, to our client, then we go from there to adjustments. Sometimes there's minimal, sometimes, you know, we miss. It's rare, but we do miss sometimes and that's okay. You know, they might have a completely different, they might not have verbally told us the exact details that we needed to hear. And so if we miss, that's okay too. And then we go back to the drawing board. It's not, you know, it's not hurt feelings on our part. If, if you're doing this with a company and the designer is giving you these hurt feelings, that's a problem. You know, you're, you're a customer and you should be able to get what you want with, we try to steer our clients, obviously, like we think we know 
what's best aesthetically, but we might not be hitting the message correctly. So that's okay. You know, I, we need to know that. And so then we'll adjust the design accordingly and we'll, we'll come to a final design. And then once we have the final design, then we will start talking about scheduling. We'll talk about material options. We'll talk about if we want to do anything special to the design or wrap uh, process, you know, th there's reflective materials, there's matte materials, there's gloss materials, there's metallics, all these types of different materials can be worked into the design to give it another level of uniqueness or another mm -hmm. level of uh, special representation for your company. So just give you a little bit of edge that'll differentiate you from, you know, your competition. And then it just, and then it's just scheduling getting it brought in, getting it properly prepped and cleaned and installed. And I don't know if you guys want to get into like the specifics and those details, but that's, that's typically the process of what you can expect. Yeah, no, that's, that's yeah, awesome. awesome. Thank you. Before I forget, is there anything that people should consider when brainstorming in terms of the legal side of it? I don't know if there are anything that people should be aware of, like you can't do glow in the dark or you can't do things that, no. is there anything that you're not really supposed to do? One thing I will say, because all I had at one point was a giant sticker of our service company on our truck and I got complaints through our HOA. Yes, um, that's a good point. So people might want to be aware if you do live in a HOA and you do use this vehicle, like this is your kind of, your, your only vehicle that you go from A to B make sure that you look into what types of vehicles you can have because that is a thing. Yeah, that's a great point. Uh, we don't see it a ton, but we do see it. Some HOAs will not allow you to have any advertisement on your vehicle parked in your driveway. If you can't fit it in your garage, that becomes a problem. If you have an RV gate, you can park it behind it. It's just, it's just gonna depend on, you know, if you wanna go down that route so definitely, yeah, you're right. Do some research on that. More than likely, it's not a problem, but you know, if you have a big lifted F-250, you can't fit it in the garage and <laughs> yeah. your, your HOA is not happy about <laughs> it. Yeah, you're gonna get some letters and you're gonna have to figure that out. Right. So kind of back to what we were just talking about, Kane was mentioning earlier that he had sent, you know, photos of the side, the front, all these different angles. Mm -hmm. um, you wanna kind of talk about that a little bit in terms of, <laughs> getting those photos, why you want those photos sure. and how you send back some yeah, of the designs. So most wrap companies will have some templates of your common vehicles. An F-250 is a common vehicle. I already have a template for it, but you should send pictures of your vehicle to the wrap company because you might think you have a crew cab, but you might only have an extended cab, or you might think you have a regular bed, but you actually have a short bed. So there are some things different and then you know platinums might have a little bit different so we always ask for photos even though i already have a template for an f-250 or you know if you you drive like one of those transits or something like that like we have all the templates but we ask for the photos because we don't know that you actually know what you have oh, so yeah. it's because you could have yeah, modified yeah, yeah, it sure. yeah you could have bought it used and modifications were done that you don't even know right. you thought yeah. it was stock yeah. yeah and then there's been you know there's been instances where we've wrapped vehicles that they've had a window and they didn't tell us they had a window you know if you got like a service van that has you know some of them have no windows some of them have windows and you know we get the vehicle on the day of install and we didn't do our part of making sure to verify this, then now we have vinyl that goes over a window. And if they were expecting to see out of that window, now we have <laughs> we have to make a game day decision and either decide to do rip that off and do a perforated vinyl to where you can see out, or I call the customer and say, Hey, do you want to see out? Or <laughs> you know, so those are so those are important. Those just that's not really a problem for our clients. That's more of a problem in-house that we just didn't do our job. So trying to uh, be efficient. Yeah. You want to be efficient. You don't want to have to make any of those game day decisions. So it's important to just, yeah, send, it doesn't have to be a perfect picture, cell phone picture, just from all angles. You know, some vehicles don't have the door trims on those like little bumper pieces on mm -hmm. the side. Some of them do. That's an important factor when you're doing a layout, you don't want that being that bumper door bumper chopping up the information, like a phone number. 
things like that. So if we think it doesn't have it and it comes with it, and then now we have to do another game day decision, whether we pull the bumper off or change the design. Right. So about how long does that normally take before I'm assuming I'll get some kind of rendering of what Correct. it would look like so I could see my truck with the design. Yeah. On yeah. In, in cases where like Kane, where he's got a lifted truck and it, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to send him a rendering on like a base F-250 that doesn't have the wheels. It doesn't, it, you know, it's better to try to show the final representation as accurately as possible. So on, on the actual vehicle photos is best, but yeah, you'll get a rendering. So we'll take, for instance, if we didn't have Kane's truck, we would take a nice side profile photo of that truck. And then we would do our, you know, we'd clip it out and do all our Photoshop magic on it and create a really good representation of what the rendering will final look like. The only thing that the rendering can't show though are material types, right? So if we're, and it's very difficult to show like in Kane's instance, like the some of it's matte, some of it's gloss. Um, it looks great on digitally, like on your screen, but it doesn't really give you a great representation of the effects it gives you in the sun and in real life. Hmm. So you do have to use a little bit of trust in the company that's doing it to, you know, try to either give, I mean, it's possible to print a small scale rendering and have them come look in actual material. You can totally do that. Um, in Kane's instance, he just trusted us, so we just did it. He didn't even know what it was really going to be fully <laughs> until we were done. So yeah, <laughs> well, that seems like a very seems like you got it dialed in. It's a very smooth process. Oh, where, it's super easy. Yeah, yeah. Because you can look, go to your website. It's an awesome website, Instagram, all those different things, and you can get some of that inspiration. But it's really just reaching out and figuring out. You know, if you go with that logo, you have a questionnaire to figure out more about your business. Totally. And then you guys, as you know, creatives are gonna put work together with a company, put something together, send photos of the vehicle, and get that on the vehicle so you can see for yourself. Obviously, what you're gonna get in real life, I would think, is gonna be much better, much cooler. It always is. Yeah, um, I mean, the renderings are, are cool, but in real life, it's way, way, way more of an effect because you have all the body lines and all these little things like that. It's and the sun hits it differently. It's really cool. So the timeline on when, for most, when you would get the design back, how long does that take? And how long does it take once we give you a vehicle? And yeah, you know, how long usually keeping a vehicle? Because that's a big thing, especially for us. When we had our service company, if we give you a vehicle, like You're we're... Down. We are yeah. down like a vehicle. So obviously, you know that that's, yep. that's going to be huge. Yeah, it's super important. We deal with that all the time. We deal with large fleets. So once we have the design approved, the design process might take a week. Once the design's approved, we can, you know, if our schedule allows it, we could literally get it in like next day. Like our printer will, if we get approved it on a Thursday at noon, we could technically get that truck in on Friday morning. Oh, wow. So it's, it is possible. It's just obviously it depends on our schedule and if it allows that, but we can turn our printer on instantly. So we do all that in-house. That's something that you do want to make sure that happens because not all rep companies do the printing in-house. Oddly enough, it's, it is a thing. It doesn't sound like it would be, but yeah, a lot of this, not, not all rep companies do the printing process. So anyways, so once we have the design approved, Let's just say our schedule is available and we can get it in tomorrow. Wraps generally take, I'd say, two days. Oh, wow. It so can bad. take one day. Depends on the design. And it depends on some of the specifics, the vehicle, et cetera. Uh, we've gotten vehicles out in one day. It's not really a problem. We like to say two days. It gives us a little bit more time to uh, do a little bit, I don't want to say more proper of a job because it's still a proper, but we're going to, sometimes we have to clay bar the car. Sometimes we have to, there's, there's little, taking little, your time to do the little things. Yeah. Like, there's little details that you don't necessarily know you're going to have to do. And if you're, if the timeline is so tight and it, there's no options, then we might not clay bar it. Uh, Cause that's just kind of like, that's just an internal thing that we do. Not all companies do that. What is that exactly? So that's just going to go in like, you know, you wash your vehicle and you can touch it and you can still kind of feel a little bit grittiness to it. 
Like it's a sticker there or something? Yeah, well, it's not necessarily stickers, but like pollen sticks to your paint, doesn't come off, oh. sap, things like this. And then what happens is if you wrap the vehicle, you'll see these little, it'll look like dirt under the wrap, but it might not be dirt. Right. So the only way to really know that is by feeling the paint and clay barring the areas that might have that. Um, obviously, if you have a brand new vehicle, that might not necessarily be the case. But if your vehicle's a few years old, these are things that we consider when we're wrapping them. So, right. and so is it possible, say, you're going to sell the vehicle or something like that? Can you, how do you get rid of the wrap? I just peel it right off. It just, it will depend. Is that something it's best to go back to a not, company? Not necessarily. I mean, if you don't want to do it, for sure, you go to a company, but Kane unwrapped his own. Speaking from experience, <laughs> uh, that service body was hard. Yeah. <laughs> something like that. <laughs> Actually, you want to do it in the summer. Yeah, that's why Paul's hot. like, do it yourself. <laughs> yeah, no, we we don't we don't prefer to do the unwraps, but we will do them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that yeah. service body I did in the summer, uh, or towards the end of the summer, and I had to get a heat gun because it's it's so hard. Mm. And mine was right, I think a little bit longer at three or right at three, and I think Paul was telling me the black has like more color in it so like but when i got to the blue and the white parts it would just like rip yeah and i mean it took me like a week <laughs> yeah it was just bits and pieces so the general consensus is if you're in the southwest three years pull that thing out save yourself the headache but yeah if you can do it in the sun that's going to be best you, the material needs to be warm to be pliable hmm. uh, once it's been on that long so if it's not warm if it's cold out it just breaks off in little tiny little pieces because it's brittle right so but three years and you can you can unwrap it yourself it's not going to damage the paint as long as you don't go past the three year you know if you get into the five six years it'll it'll start to ghost your paint and, and things like that so you don't want to do that right and what are some questions for anybody that's not because i feel like anybody here in arizona you definitely got to hit up paul and brand smith like i i definitely would i don't <laughs> know where sure. else you'd go but <laughs> anywhere outside of here do you have suggestions because people listening to this i'm sure they want to get on this and maybe get their vehicle wrapped yeah. how should they go about vetting companies what are some things that they could be looking at on their website maybe yeah. even some questions like you know what does your process look like what kind of materials yeah like what are some good questions definitely find a company that you like the aesthetics of their designs that's important. Right. That's... If you don't like their design, they're probably not going to do a very good job. Yeah. yeah. So, but with the caveat, don't don't get like if you see that they've wrapped Red Bull, and you see they've wrapped, you know, Coca Cola. They're not doing that design work. I promise you. Okay. Yeah. So don't like any of these large companies and you that's in their portfolio featured on. Yeah. Like they that literally they probably just got the material printed already and sent to them and they were the installers on those projects because agencies are doing that. They're not doing that, I promise you. So look at the small companies, you know, look at the the no name brand companies and see what those aesthetics look like because that's gonna be a good representation of their internal design team. Okay, so just that's something to think about, you know, because I see it all the time. I see all these even locally here, you know, they like they say, oh, we did stuff for ASU and we did stuff for the Phoenix Suns. And you're like, wow, these guys are these guys are must be big time. They're not. They literally got contracted to do that project install only. And then they're taking credit for the design and they're taking credit for the printing. They might not have done any of it. So you really do need to just just look at like the small companies, because more than likely they they did that. And then, yeah, just ask them if they have in-house designers and, you know, what are some of their favorite pieces that they've designed? You could ask those kinds of questions. Uh, that'll give you a good indication of their design capabilities. Uh, so putting design aside, you can also hire a design company to do the design and then have them work directly with a wrap company. You know, if, if you have, if you're in a town where there's a wrap company, but you know they're not very good at design, but they kill it and the production portion of it. Could you guys do something like that? Yeah. Say we, you lived on the East Coast yep. and I wanted you to design something, but. Yep. You we know. do it all the time. Like I like I said earlier in the podcast, we've done projects in every state. Just because in a lot of these states, like Indiana, for example, we've done a ton of stuff for like the racing industry. The, the, the local talent just, 
you know, it might just, they might just be stuck in this rut where they just repeat the same stuff over and over and over. And it's sometimes it's nice to get something that is outside of that area so that they can create something that's unique. Uh, so yeah, you can use, you could hire any designer that does vehicle wraps. You do need to kind of be specific on that because a designer that designs business cards might not be able to design a vehicle wrap. Right. There are these, you know, idiosyncrasies and things like that are really important to understand about how wrap application works before you can design properly on that. But at the same time, if you know a really good designer, you might be able to send the wrap company the design files and let them do the final adjustments to make it work. So if you don't have a company that has good designs, but you know their production and install is very good, uh, you might seek out other designers to create your brand and create your wrap. Okay, so once you get past that, now we're just talking about materials and install. Materials, it's one of those subjects, probably like you guys in the pool industry, like there's Pentair and there's Hayward. Hayward, right? So like some people are going to say Pentair is better and some people are going to maybe say Hayward's better. I'm not sure, but you're going to find that similar. <laughs> you're going to find that similar in the wrap industry. Some people are going to say Avery. Some people are going to say 3M. Some people are going to say some other brand. I'm not even sure. So but they all do, they kind of have their different things because I've seen videos like where they might say that Avery's not bad, but it just might not have as much stretch or might not Correct. be as flexible as yeah, some and, of the other ones. And it's really like there are installer preference. So some installers prefer a material because they know how to work it. Right. As far as like longevity, there's a spectrum within each of these categories. So there's an Avery product just because it's an Avery doesn't mean it's an, a good Avery. They have, they have intermediate Avery's, they have good Avery's and they have really good Avery's and they're all at different price points. Mm -hmm. And same thing with 3M. So if what is that? That's vinyl vinyl. So okay. they have, yeah, there's different levels to the vinyl. So, you know, there's like, is there something special for Arizona or just, I mean, a place yeah. that's extremely sunny? Yeah. You're going to want to make sure that the laminate that they're using is a non PVC. That's one thing to, to non PVC, non -PVC. In Avery's instance, there's, they have a laminate that's like 1.5 mil and then they have a laminate that's two mil different pricing, different lifespan. So is that the thickness, the thickness, correct? Okay. Yeah. And so, you know, the thicker the material, the longer the UV is going to hold off and the, the easier the removal is going to be because it's just has a little bit more to more. The thickness is going to add a little bit more integrity to the vinyl. Sure. So you have to be careful of just this brand name thing, because the brand name doesn't mean anything if they're using the junky version of that product. So just, it's like, oh, they use Avery. That's why they're not good. And we use 3M. Like that doesn't necessarily mean anything. So don't get too hung up on that. I would say if the price seems cheap, they're probably using the cheaper product. I mean, it's just, it's just, you know, so if you're Logic, yeah. yeah, I mean, so if you're price shopping and this guy's $2,500 for a full wrap and this guy's $3,500 for a full wrap and it's just materials and install. Those are the things to consider. Like, I want to know exactly the product you're using and you can do your due diligence on what product it is and what its lifespan is. So just be careful in that arena. There are different variables within each product category. So it's hard. That's it's, I'm, I'm trying to think from an outsider, like, how do I know? Um, I think if it were me and maybe what some others might do is if, I mean, because you guys have all used Instagram as kind of a vehicle to get to where you need to go. And you could use that where if you find a company that's in your area and they've tagged a company or a person, like DM that company oh, or person totally. and that's say, yeah. what was your experience, Brandsmith, in getting this yep. vehicle wrapped? Because I feel like people will be pretty transparent and honest. Oh, but like, yeah. dude, did not go there. It was a complete shit show. They had my <laughs> vehicle for like, right. you know, a month. Yeah, that's a great point. Yeah, you can totally do that. You can yeah, follow them on Instagram. They're going to tag XYZ company, send them a DM. And if they don't, there might be a reason for that. Yeah, yeah. Don't, <laughs> so don't, don't hire a company that doesn't have social media. Don't hire a company that doesn't have a Yelp. Don't have a company that doesn't have Google. That just means they're off the grid. They're never going to be accountable. Right. Just yeah. a side note, though, I will say 
anytime I've gotten a vehicle wrapped, I do ceramic coat it afterwards. Yeah, it's major if you and can. And I feel like it makes it way easier to wash, and I feel like even gives you a little bit longer life. Yeah. What is that exactly? Well, ceramic coatings are, I mean, they're not new news anymore, but it's basically a nano film that goes, you self-apply, kind of like, think of it almost like a wax, if you will. It used to be super like secluded, like you had to get Ceramic Pro to get it. Now you can buy the stuff on Amazon. It holds up really well. You can buy it for a hundred bucks and you can do it yourself over a weekend. So... So it's just something that you it's apply a, to the... Yeah, to it's the, an additional coating, but it's not a wax because waxes kind of degrade pretty quickly and you need to redo them quite a bit. Ceramic coatings could last a year or two years, maybe longer depending on how well you take care of it. But it's definitely a, a game changer for you know vehicle surfaces in general. I mean, you can ceramic coat your wheels, you can ceramic coat your glass, you can ceramic coat everything. Yeah, I will say on the darker ones, I would recommend it because... They're a pain in the ass to wash, especially like the black like I have. It's a lot of work. So the, the ceramic coating makes it easier to wash. And I feel like the black stays richer longer as well. Right. Yeah. I mean, this is it's not for everybody. Obviously, if you're listening and you just want you just need fleet vehicles yeah. and you're not you're not you don't have an eighty thousand dollar truck and you don't care about it that much. And it's not it's not that big of a deal, but it does help. Right. Hmm. Is there things that like you shouldn't do when your vehicle is wrapped? Like, is there a certain... You want to be careful when you're power washing it. You want to make sure that you have a little bit of distance between the nozzle and the material. Automatic car washes. uh, I mean, I drive my personal vehicle through it that's wrapped, but it's kind of not all my personal vehicles. So it's like, you know what I mean? Like, you got, do you have a preference of a car wash? Like, is a Costco car wash okay? Yeah, just no, touchless. Yeah, you want to use a touchless. I mean, if it's going to scratch paint, it's going to scratch a wrap. So it's just one That'd of those. That'd be nuts. Somebody goes in a car wash, right. it, it's fully wrapped. They come out <laughs> and no, it's gone. Just off. No, you won't, you won't have any of those issues. It's more so, you know, a scratch type thing. Yeah. It's the same as paint. I got some Arizona pinstripes like two weeks after Paul wrapped mine. I was, I was going shooting and I scraped this tree and I was like, son of a. Right yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. So one, one thing I'll note with that, one of the nice things about a wrap is if you do scratch a fender or scratch a door, like we can just reprint that one panel and redo it. Oh, that's cool. So that's something. That, is that an additional cost? Yeah, obviously it'll be, it's not going to be warranted, but we usually take care of our customers. We're not trying to gouge them for that stuff. Right. I mean, it's not your fault that he's fucking. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Unless you're, you're wrapped like driving in a tree. I'll tell you to wait three years. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it, it is one of those things that, you know, you're throwing a bucket of chemicals in the back of your truck and the top comes off and spills all over the wrap and ruins it for some reason. I don't know what kind of material would do that, but you know, then you just literally only have to replace that panel. Muriatic acid might do that. Yeah, yeah, might really mess <laughs> might. Some shit up. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I forgot to ask this question, but do you take the deposit like even before the design, or yeah? So like the way I do things, because uh, typically I just collect a design deposit, um, and then the balance is due upon pickup of the vehicle. Okay. So some people might take like a design deposit and then a material deposit, and then collecting just depends on their cash flow sure um not out of reason i would say we don't do that i don't even know i don't like kane i didn't even tell him what the prices are collected deposit so <laughs> he's just like uh, <laughs> at the end he's like hey pay me up yeah i i literally delivered the vehicle and he's like how much is like i don't even know yet <laughs> and I'm like, i gotta figure this out it's not his rap wasn't straightforward so you know and straightforward wraps i can tell you an exact price every time but and, and Kane and I have relationships. So, you know, obviously if like any new customer comes to me, I don't, I don't do that with them. Like new customers have to get vetted. I have to collect a design deposit and make sure that they're invested as much as we're investing. And I hate that, to say it. That's everybody listening, including yeah. uh, us. Yes. Chasers. Yeah. Right. So like, yes, we don't, we're not that close yet. Yeah. So <laughs> you're, you're going to just, you know, just expect to pay a design deposit. And you know, if like for us, it's usually $600 design deposit. If that's not something you feel comfortable with because you've been burned in the past from other designers, which I've heard many horror stories, 
completely valid, but we don't do spec work. So um, we don't feel the need to. And that's something to consider. I would say just do your homework and you won't have hurt feelings. You won't have a hard that $600 deposit is not going to be like, oh, I don't trust you. If you have that inkling, like you might be, look, you know, might look elsewhere. Right. Well, when you have your business, you have your clients that you prefer to work with too. And so you're vetting them as well. Totally. Yeah. You know, you're not trying to just take on every job, just like any, every business should be doing. Correct. You know, so you have a specific customer you want and specific way you want to do things. So, right. You know, yeah, it's not I for mean, everybody. Yeah, you just, you know, you want to hope to treat the people that you're doing business with the way you want to be treated. So, yeah, like for me, like I have no problem paying a deposit for somebody's time. And, you know, and also like in some cases, like if you find a company that, you know, they require this design deposit and or just don't pay half. OK, like, you know, if, if they tell you it, if they tell you it's a three thousand dollars and it's the only company in, in your area and you're not sure about the design. They say it's fifteen hundred dollars to start. Like, hey, let me just pay for the design portion first because they might miss it and you might have to go elsewhere. That's a reality, right? You know? un that's an unfortunate reality. But you know, if you're really looking for a specific aesthetic and design and execution, and they can't do it, there's some companies that might not do it. You might you might look at Kane's truck and then go down to the local ABC signs and say, I want this, and they just completely miss it. They can't even come close to it, right? So just be careful in those instances. I would just only pay design deposits. Since we're talking about price, I mean, what what do you think budget wise people should look at budgeting for for a wrap? Yeah, it's a good question. I know all everything is different, it's, but it varies depending on the vehicle and depending on the complete coverage. So, you know, if you're listening to this and you're trying to get a gauge on what you should come to the table with expecting to pay, you know, we can we've executed partial wraps that look great. So if you're in the valley, you could look at you know, like a penguin air or, or something of that nature, those aren't full wraps. So we consider them like half wraps. If you think like a full wrap might be say $3,000, we'll put a round number out there. Uh, half wrap might be, you know, $2,000 for the first time because it includes the design. And the second time as you add fleets, it might only be 1500. Yeah. So these are some, and you can, and you can still execute on a high level with branding on partial wraps. It just really depends on the aesthetics. If you have a red truck and your brand's blue, like you're going to have to fully wrap that truck. Right. It's just, there's no, no way around it. But you know, if, if you have a neutral truck, like a white or a black, or maybe even a gray, you might be able to get away with a smaller budget on those trucks. If the truck is nice. Sure. Now, if the truck is beat and it's got paint chips and different color fender, you're going to want to paint that whole truck or wrap that whole truck. <laughs> so these are That's all just common things. sense. <laughs> yeah. So these are all just things to consider. I would say, you know, a full wrap on an average vehicle is about three grand ish. So maybe like three to five grand you should prepare for. And yeah, I mean, if you have five grand, you're going to be able to execute probably everything that you need with a, a really great logo design some supporting pieces like business cards and leave behinds and maybe some simple hats and we can create a package for something like that for sure. Yeah. Very cool. Thank you. NC Brands is offering solutions for pool professionals in 2021. And they don't just mean awesome products like Pro Series Pro Blend or Pool Perfect Max, which will help increase the efficiency of any pool program. NC has also launched the new Pro Series Pool and Spa app. Designed for professional use only. This app provides expert water analysis and the ability to store customer information, including photos of the backyard and water testing history. You can even email a visit report to your customers with the unique feature that links right to your smartphone's email function. Not only that, but NC now has two new training opportunities for dealers this year. One option for live, customized sessions, and another one consisting of key training topics in a module or optional quiz format. To hear more about it, listen to episode 135 or check them out by going to naturalchemistry.com or ncprotraining.com and you can even click the link below. So why do you feel that wrapping a vehicle is one of the best ways anybody can promote their brand? Because we've talked a lot about it, but let's get specific here because it's going to lead to what, maybe not Kane's vehicle, but like why is it so important? Because this vehicle is seriously a billboard everywhere. Right. 
Yeah, I mean, it, there's a few different levels to this. There's there's the people that are looking for the instant gratification of making sales. So that's a por that's a portion of it. So like you said, if I have a pool company, I wrap my pool truck and I'm pulled up to this house and my neighbor just moved in or just fired a pool guy or what have you and they see this guy, they're going to give him a chance. So there's that portion of it. So that's the instant sales. That's the that's the I paid three thousand dollars for this truck truck wrap and I want to get my money back. That happens relatively quickly in those instances. There's the other portion of showing up to a job and just if you're showing up and it's a stay at home mom and you got a white van and they're automatically going to be on the defense. They don't know who just pulled up versus if you pull up in a nicely represented vehicle wrap and it represents your brand well and it's designed well, it's like, oh, there's, you know, there's Jimmy, the pool guy. So there's that portion. And then there's a portion of just overall trust. And it's huge with any kind of business is if you care about the representation of your business as much to wrap your vehicle, then you probably chances are want to be trustworthy or you want to be what's the word you're going to come across as somebody that you can trust because you're not going to just disappear right yeah you know if, if you don't have if they don't have a brand name or a way of they steal your patio furniture you know like how are you going to find this guy right so yeah. you know like by showing up you you're showing up accountable you're showing up trustworthy and you look like i'm not going to you know, just disappear and not show up. So it's an important part of it as well. So all these things, when you break it down, are imperative to business. Right. And this is seriously, being in business is like a big game. It's a very serious game. But the game is, how do I make as much money as possible? How does me and my team become as happy as possible? How do I get more vacation and live life to the fullest? How do I get there? The way you get there is by things like this. Yeah. You have a fleet of vehicles that is wrapped really badass. Now you've got culture where yep. people are psyched to be in one of these nice F-150s. Yeah, fully that's wrapped. the other part of it. If your shop is here in Scottsdale and you're servicing, you know, this 10, 20 mile radius, you're at the stoplight. The person behind you and the people on the side of you, they live here for the most part. You're going to stop at AJ's. You're going to stop at Circle K. You're going to stop wherever. Those people, they usually live in that area. You're doing the same routine every day. You're going into a community that not everybody has access to. Right. The people in that community every single week are going to see that vehicle. So that is what it looks like. And the totally. way that you get to the things we just talked about is by getting more quality accounts. Yeah. You want to be in those exclusive communities and neighbors come up and want you to service their pool. Yeah. You're in Desert Mountain in a neighborhood. Wouldn't it be nice instead of just doing one, you can do 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. You could be the totally. premier pool person in there. The way you get there is by the way you, everything these days is, everything is look. Yeah. I mean, you got to do the work. Portion you have it, to yeah. put, you like that is mandatory. You have to put in the work. But after that is the brand. Yep. Without a doubt. If you think it's not, I think yeah, you're I mean, mistaken. Yeah. There's companies that might not have as good a brand, but it's like they've been around 50, 60 that, years. Yeah, they that is something have relationships. that, yeah, unless you buy them out, you can't get that. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Either you have the brand or you have the relationships. Right. There's really, those are the two accelerators in business. So, you know, it's, I've done this time and time again. I've created, I've helped create people's brands like the fake it till you make it. And it's, you know, it's got a negative connotation to it, but it's so true. Like if you, at least if, as long as you do the work and you're good at what you do, if you have a brand that represents, you can compete with the biggest of the companies aesthetically, then they're going to automatically have, give you the same level of trust. So yeah. yeah, you win the and first I, impression piece, but you still have to do all the work that backs that up. Right. So there's like that. Yeah. That you, gap too. Like, so if you're listening and you, and you, you're like, I'm the best pool guy in my area and I don't have all the work because, you know, XYZ has it. And probably the only missing part is probably the branding. If yeah, you're, right. if you're, if you're legit the best at what you do and you feel like you 
aren't getting the accounts that you should be getting or the pricing that you should be getting, more than likely it's the branding. But I also think, think about your personal happiness because if you're, say you're doing it just by yourself, it's just like anything else. You know, I talk about shoes and different things like that, where it's like, there's something about making good choices. You wake up in the morning. It's got to be a great feeling to like open up that garage and see that beautiful truck. And it's just all wrapped and cleaned up. And that gives you confidence. And that's what you need. You oh, yeah. need to get into that vehicle. You need to get into those nice boots. You need to, you know, put on that quality suit, whatever it is to make you feel good. That confidence is what's going to like make deals, make sales. It's going to make you be a better leader within your company. So I think on a level of kind of your yeah, internal psychology. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's also um, another major point. You're right. I would think that with, you know, especially with Kane driving all around town, everybody is seeing in that like, damn, that's dope. That's cool. I really mm -hmm. like that. It's actually going to really help your marketing strategy on Google and Facebook even more so, I think, mm -hmm. because now you can say put a thousand dollars and target market a five two six zero like right here, and they're going to be a lot more trusting and aware of mm -hmm. this ad that I'm seeing because I've seen that truck before. Correct. So it's major. I feel like that is like a, a true win. It takes time and money to get to that place, but I feel like that is that is key. And yeah, that's a great point too. I mean, a vehicle wrap too is super cost effective because you're saying, let's say it's three thousand dollars for your vehicle wrap. If you take that through thirty six months, you're paying like eighty what, five dollars a month or something like that around yeah, it, that. It's insane. So eighty five dollars a month for your branding. Where else can you pay eighty five dollars and get that kind of exposure? I mean, it's a it's a twenty four seven three sixty five billboard rolling around. You know, yep. You're not getting that. You're not paying for you know, ads, you're not running a magazine ad, you're not doing TV, radio, you're not doing anything for 85 bucks a month, you know? So yeah. if that thing wasn't crazy. working, I, I would tell my wife to pick me up at AJ's. I'd be like, I'm, <laughs> I'm not working today, it. but I'm just going to leave it over here so that everybody can see like, seriously, yeah. like, yeah, you might actually like traffic jams now, you know, yeah. you can hang out in just LA and drive down the, drive down the freeway, just, just make it with your billboard. Yeah. No, it's, it's so important. And even if, even if we didn't offer vehicle wraps, that would be top one of the top items I would make sure that my clients get, you know, but you have to get a good one. So that's, but that's the thing. There's not too many really good ones. The really good ones really stand out. Like yeah. I feel like when you see Kane's truck, like it's kind of rare. You don't see as yeah. many of those. You see more of the kind of generic. Yeah. I mean, this, yeah. The, the, I mean, our industry is a little rough for that, for sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, because they just don't know any better, you know. Right. That's the thing is a lot of people don't know. They just, they go, you know, they drive by ABC signs or, you know, Signorama or whatever, these chain wrap sign shops. And, you know, and the reality it is of it is they probably have a $15 an hour designer working there. Mm -hmm. You know, somebody that's in school or somebody that's, you know, thought, you know, like, oh, I'd, I'd like to be a designer, but, you know, and, and they just don't have the chops yet, you know. So, right. you know, it doesn't mean they won't, but that's like a starter job. So it's something that, you know, you really need to vet out the design portion of it. That's that's key. And another know? thing, you know, with being like a mobile marketing piece, like, you know, in our day and age, you can turn off TV, you know, at, at Com commercials and things aren't as good like you can't turn off a vehicle wrap yeah you can't ignore it i mean it's there when you're driving you see it it's just yeah. it's everywhere so it's it's super effective I yeah think. i think it's a no-brainer especially in your industry of the pool pool industry for sure all right so we have a last question and that's you know what exactly is sort of the design hierarchy of people listening and the do's and don'ts and different things like that yeah so you want to be really concise on a vehicle wrap because generally they are moving you know maybe in the pool industry it's a little bit less of that because you guys are parked at houses for 30 minutes or what have you or if you're on a job for a month you you know you don't have to have that as concise but generally speaking you want to make sure that you get who you are what you do and how to get a hold of you so those are the three pieces that need to be clear the who you are is the biggest that's the logo that's the brand that's the colors what you do is your services now 
this is you have to be careful because if you know you have 15 services don't list them all try to be as concise about the services that you want to offer if you're trying to get away from pool maintenance like don't put that on there right no big <laughs> so you know those and then how to get a hold of you would be generally you know phone number or website or social media those are that's it I like what you said the other day when we were talking about, you know, on the side may be less and then on the back you might put a little bit more of what you do so that right. when you're stopped in a stoplight, people can actually read yeah, it. Yeah, so like, so you're not ruining the aesthetics of the vehicle. You always are trying to balance aesthetics and message. So you have to really find that balance that you're not taking away from either. So on the side, we might just put phone number website and no services or like maybe the services are smaller under the logo. And then on the back, you might get into, on the tailgate, for instance, you might list out like tile cleaning and whatever other specific details that, you know, are your A and Bs of your business. You know, your the margins are good on those or things that you're trying to acquire more accounts for. You know, if, if you're currently maintaining pools and you want to get into tile cleaning and you want to get into remodeling, remodeling, those are the things that you want to make sure that you know, you can be a little bit more specific on the back when somebody's parked behind you. It might not, you don't need to get the local, like the neighbor necessarily for those types of jobs. That job is good for anywhere, mm -hmm. right? You you do a remodel. You don't need to do the neighbor's remodel because those are big jobs. You can do a remodel in the next town over. So if that's the case, then you, yeah, tailgate's great for that because they're going to be parked behind you. Right. And can you want to talk about the maybe progression from your first vehicle to where you are now? I mean, you've obviously you're as you built your brand that changed, right? Yeah. Um, I think it, it comes down to like goals. So like my first wrap was just the traditional white and blue. I think a more like a half wrap with my phone number, my name, and it said weekly service, rep pool repairs, and I think tile cleaning. That was, you know, I just wanted customers at that point. I didn't really care who it was. So there wasn't like a, a target and, you know, people called because they saw it driving around all the time. And then the next one, I, you know, I started getting into Scottsdale and I didn't want to look like everyone else. So I told Paul, I was very specific about, I don't want white and blue. And then that's where we got the black one. And at the time that was like really cool. And then on this one, it was, you know, I'm at this high tier clientele and I want something that kind of matches where they live. Seeing what your customer base demographic and then designing according to that yeah it's an important piece of the the branding portion like we discussed earlier is you really need to know who your customer base is and and what kind of projects and customers you want to continue to get or develop into those are important pieces yeah and i think anybody listening you can get as creative as you want because i feel like if i had a big team and a big fleet i'd probably be very I would want to know where these leads were coming from. So if I know if this vehicle goes into this neighborhood, even if the tech changes, that's okay. I need a different message on that vehicle because it's going into this neighborhood specifically. Totally, yeah, you could do that. If you wanted a custom link. So say it's poolchasers.com slash 01 or whatever it is. I know that if there's leads coming in that are filling out forms on this, that it's coming from a truck lead. And every single one of those, say you've got, 10, 15, 20 trucks on the road, you can see, oh, wow, like for some reason, like truck number five is like pulling in a lot of leads. Let's look at that route. Oh, they're actually getting, they're going up to North Phoenix and this is the route they take. Okay, why don't we da 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 da? Because at the end of the day, numbers don't lie. Yeah. And if you can figure out how all of those things work and fit it into your marketing strategy, like you're going to kill it. But I wanted to share that because I think Sometimes people think that they can't be creative or they can't do certain things, but think outside of the box. Yeah, what are people doing? Go in the different direction. Don't do what everybody else does. I think even now with the landscape of QR codes, we talked about like, you know, if you you can do the specific links, everybody's using QR codes to read menus now. It's kind of changed from what it used to be. So there's a way you could do that too if you wanted to on different vehicles, have different QR codes that link to different ads and you can yeah. track that too so yeah and you could give those specific texts specific leave behind business cards that have the exact qr code as well right so it's it could you're totally right like that's when you get into the fun 
nuances of business and owning a business and being able to market a business and and quantitate it uh that's yeah it's totally doable it's smart thinking if you i would definitely seek those opportunities for sure yeah more recently have you been doing more ads than phone numbers i feel like everyone is putting ads their instagram ad or what yeah there's you know people are definitely you know it's it's hard because we work with big big companies they're still not even they they're old school they yeah. don't they don't deal with a lot of the social media stuff so there's market there for any of you young guys that are into social media because the big companies aren't really pushing it hmm. i think i think that's still a very open platform for business yeah very cool i feel like i would try to make somebody think like they're behind me be like a yellow deal to like honk if you want me to pull over and <laughs> like you know something something to like get them to think a little bit and even if they wouldn't act on it like honk if you have a pool yeah. it's like oh, i yeah. do have a pool i'm not gonna honk but i kind of feel it's like fun. i'm gonna remember you oh, yeah. there's we've done some crazy <laughs> stuff over the years i mean if if you're a creative person like that you can do some you can do some fun stuff and it'll be part of your culture like we discussed yeah. earlier and uh, you're part of your branding and your initiative of how how you market your company. The, the wraps are a great way to really, really tie all that in. Yeah. And like you said, it'll make all your, if you have employees, you know, now you're giving them that differentiator from the next company that allows them to like really feel vested in your business. Yeah. Right. Definitely like breathing some new life into the, into the business. Yeah. For sure. Did you guys have anything else before we wrap this up? Cool. Sweet. Well, where can people reach out to you if, if they have questions or they want to work with you? Yeah, sure. Uh, hit us on Instagram. That's a great option. So it's at the brand Smith Co. Somebody has my brand Smith. Uh, or you can go to brandsmith.com or just Google us and just you know reach out. And uh, if you want to send us an email, emails all over the internet as well. So. What about you, Cam? What's your uh, Instagram handle so you can check out your cool truck? Uh, everything for me is at Premier Pulazy. Very cool. Well, we appreciate the awesome conversation, guys. Kane, thanks for the introduction, and yeah. we're super excited to continue this relationship with you. Yeah, so, awesome. I hope appreciate to, you hope being to come here. Come back <laughs> for sure. All right, thanks, guys. Hey, pool chasers! Thanks for checking out this episode. Did you know that each episode has its own page on our website? This is where you can find more information about the guests and episode topic, as well as all the resources that we discussed throughout the show. To get to the webpage, click the link below. Also below, you will find links to the sponsors of the show, as well as links to follow us on our social media channels. On our channels, you will find some of our favorite clips and bonus material. Please follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Our tag is Pool Chasers. We also have a Facebook group for the Pool Chasers community. Here you will find like-minded professionals all looking to make each other better. One last thing, if the episode has brought you value, please check out our Patreon page to support us. And if you could please rate and review the podcast, we would love to hear what your favorite topics are. Thank you for your time and your ear. See you out there, pool chasers. chasers.